Healing Intelligence, A Mystical Mushroom Experience Written by Dr. Lucas Pollock Into the Unknown Australia, Leonard Bay, 1993 Endless expanses, the sun towers high above the horizon. The vault of the sky makes the gigantic cloud towers look like little dwarfs. Orange, red, violet, wherever I turn, the sky glows and vibrates in a supernatural blaze of color. The indigenous people of Australia believe that their land is part of a multidimensional world that they call dream time, an eternal now in which past, present, and future flow into one another, just like in my dreams. Ever since childhood, I wanted to experience the richness of my dreams while awake. Now, fate has given me a golden ticket for a mystical experience at the world's end. We spent days in the van because they wanted to show me the magic of untouched nature at the last southern tip of their continent. Since the Stone Age, people have taken magic mushrooms in communion as a sacred ritual in nature. I had only been in Australia for three months and had magically fallen in with three friends, Tony, Heather, and Francis. I don't remember doing anything about it apart from telling them my dreams and asking about theirs. Their annual mushroom ritual was part of how they lived their dreams. These magical mushrooms were neither toxic nor addictive, as I had previously read in Plants of the Gods, an ethnopharmacological reference book that had just been published. Even the drive through the endless, deserted landscapes was a supernatural experience compared to Europe. We only made one stop so that Heather could show us her former home. When we reached Heather's former elementary school during the tour of the forest settlement, a family of gophers escaped down the steps into the thicket. Heather laughed so hard that the freckles on her snub nose began dancing. She was the fairy-like red-haired daughter of a forest ranger, and what her pale complexion didn't suggest, she had grown up in the Australian wilderness. She was one of the last to leave the village with a heavy heart to study in Melbourne. In China... We have huge abandoned cities that the forest has reclaimed, says Francis. Maybe their residents just went to find mushrooms to detox from the madness of the city, like we did, teased Heather. Francis frowned. Then she announced with a dramatic gesture worthy of a Peking opera actress. Ah, that's why no one's come back, and that's why I moved to Canberra, where you live in the woods. But I gladly moved on to Melbourne for friends like you in the sea. Francis replied, laughing and hugging Heather. Yes, the sea, and you wouldn't have met your Viennese philosopher if you hadn't moved to Melbourne. Lucas, what do you say? Heather asked, waving me over to them as they laughed again, looking like two drunken angels. Lucas, I'm sure you've researched everything again, and that you're thinking of a thousand things again. But what's more important now is the group hug, our friendship ritual, that's the best medicine. Tony, are you joining us? There we were. A wild mix. Two Australians, a Texan Chinese woman, and her exotic friend from Austria, who couldn't decide whether to take Ludwig Wittgenstein or Arnold Schwarzenegger as his role model. How unlikely it was to find friends in the middle of nowhere whom I could trust enough to experience mushrooms together. But I was awake, and they were there. It took a few more moments, and I no longer thought about where we came from or who we were. We were just people, and my restless mind came to rest. After another day in the van, I finally arrived, got out, and immediately had to close my eyes. Blinded by the sun's brilliance, I marveled at its play of light with my eyes closed. The warmth of the sun was like the warmth of an embrace. Safe and sound, I watched the dark blue-violet spheres pulsating in a golden-red storm of color. The darkness in the light fascinated me for a long time, but then a drop of sweat from the sun running down my face brought me back into my body. I wanted to see where we were and opened my eyes. 